Today I am conflicted. I don't think that Pakistan should recognize Israel today because it would be done under duress, because it would be with a gun pointed on our heads. I don't have a problem with Israel. It's a Jewish state. Pakistan is a Muslim state. States are different in terms of their compositions. We should keep just one thing in mind, which is that Israel has done grave injustice to the Palestinians. It has thrown them out. It is not agreeing to the two-state solution which it did at Camp David. This was formally written, signed into a document. And it has moved away from that. Instead, it is moving towards a policy of annexation. It is building settlements and it is expanding towards Eretz Israel, the larger Israel. Now, if Pakistan recognizes Israel at this moment in time, then that is condoning bad behavior. It is saying that Netanyahu and the Israeli right wing were correct in what they did. That force is what really matters in international politics. And I don't think we should recognize Israel. Now, let's wait. Let's wait. Netanyahu will go. He is already under charges of corruption. And we can hope that a more sensible Israel will emerge. And there are good people in Israel who don't want the oppression of Palestinians. They have fought for the Palestinians. They have fought against the brutalities of the Israeli state. So let us not defeat them as well. In recognizing Israel with all its bad behavior, we shall be doing no one a favor. As the Arabs have slid lower and lower, as their military and their political strength has decreased, they have dragged Pakistan along with them. So today, they are in a position where they simply f cannot deal with Israel. And so they are being forced under the pressure of the Trump administration to make deals that would have been inconceivable in past years. But why do it now? Trump is on his way out. It's true that Biden is also very much under the grip of the Zionist lobby in the United States, and there will not be a fundamental change of policy under Biden. But to agree to the Middle East plan of Jared Kushner, who is Trump's son-in-law, is then agreeing to a monstrous injustice. If Pakistan recognizes Israel, it's a triumph of Zionism, of Zionist expansionism. And of course, Israel is very happy that one of its principal opponents, which was Pakistan, which opposed it for religious reasons, now has had to acquiesce. And so for Israel, it means that its strength, its power has managed to defeat all those who had initially opposed it. Now, Pakistan is far away from Israel. It takes something like 1,500 miles away or so. And Pakistan has no relationship with Israel. India does. India has a very solid defense relationship with Israel. It buys Israeli equipment. It buys is Israeli goods of high-tech goods of various kinds. And there's a two-way trade between them. There's nothing of that sort for Pakistan. For Israel, this would be a moral triumph for us it would be a moral defeat we would have then said that we are mere stooges of saudi arabia and the united arab emirates we would have then said that uh, 
Iran is in the wrong in supporting the Palestinians, but most of all, it is the Palestinians who would feel betrayed by Pakistan's recognition of Israel. And so, as I said earlier, we should recognize Israel. We should have done it much earlier, and we should at some later point, but not now. Let us remember that the Pakistan military has never done any good to the Palestinians. Let us remember a black September when King Hussein of Jordan called upon General Ziaul Haq to be present there and physically suppress the Palestinians and that he led the attack upon the Palestinian camps in Jordan in that horrible episode. Why is the Pakistan military now wanting to go and recognize Israel? What is the pressure on them? There's no pressure. The pressure is that they want jobs in Saudi Arabia, in UAE, where they uh, can get jobs post-retirement and very lucrative jobs. After all, General Rahil Sharif was heading the Islamic forces under Saudi Arabia. So they want jobs and they see that this is very, uh, a very lucrative market also now for another reason. As we know, Saudi Arabia is embarked upon a program of building nuclear reactors with the ultimate aim of getting nuclear weapons. And here, Pakistan has some definite uh, expertise to share. Now, a lot of Middle Eastern countries are interested in nuclear weapons, and Pakistan managed to get ahead. We tested our nuclear weapons in 1998, and since then, Iran approached Pakistan, and now Saudi Arabia, although it has not formally done so, knows that there is expertise over here. So, the military to military, and the and the nuclear establishment to nuclear establishment relationship is very much there. Pakistan has refused to recognize Israel, not because it is a Jewish country, but because it has illegally occupied Palestine. And it is for the same reason that we in Pakistan do not recognize the Indian occupation of Kashmir. We say, let the Kashmiris decide for themselves. However, we do recognize India and had to recognize India because after all we were born out of India. It's different for, for Israel. Israel we could have recognized, we should have recognized earlier because it is not just Muslims who lived over there, this was a genuine Jewish homeland as well. And this is where two peoples could have lived together in peace. We did not recognize Israel for religious reasons. We let that prejudice stay within us. But once things had, once the facts on the ground had been, had been established, then we should have at some point in the last 20, 30 years, admitted that and got on with things and normalized relations with Israel to the point where we say, yes, we recognize your existence, but we do not recognize your occupation of the land. And if you continue to expand, if you continue to dominate, if you don't give the Palestinians even minimal rights, then we, while recognizing you, we shall oppose you. We shall oppose you in the United Nations. We shall give moral and diplomatic support to the Palestinians. And that is what we should have done. We should have done exactly the same to the Kashmiris. We should have given them moral and diplomatic support, which we did. But then we made a mistake in Kashmir. We also gave them military support, but that's another matter.
It is amazing how powerful Israel is. Let's remember what its population is. Nine million people. Look at the population of Lahore, which is 12 million people. So that's just three quarters of Lahore. Or compare with Karachi, which has 20 million people. So Israel is less than half the population of Karachi. And yet it dominates world politics. Yet it has 400 million Arabs suppressed like that. It defeated them in the 1967 war, defeated them in the 1973 war. Why could it do it? And the answer is, it's not because they had oil wealth. Israel doesn't have any oil wealth. It has no natural resources. What it has is brain power. The power of science and technology, which the Arabs don't have, which Pakistan does not have, which Muslim countries do not have. And why do they not have it? Well then, go read my book, Islam and Science, Religious Orthodoxy and the Battle for Rationality. It, it is something to reflect upon that just one Israeli is equal to 40, 50 Arabs and even more Muslims in terms of the amount of invention, innovation, scientific creativity. And that's what brings power in the modern world. It's not your oil. It's not your, your physical resources that matter. It is brain power. Pakistan should recognize Israel if it gives at least some minimal rights to the Palestinians. Ideally, we should hope for the two-state solution. After all, these are two peoples, the Jews and the Muslims, the Jews and the Palestinians. Palestinians have more than Muslims. They have also Christians amongst them. They are legitimate holders of that piece of land. They have a historical right to it. They both need to live in peaceful coexistence. So Pakistan should recognize Israel at an opportune time, not now. Now, what could that opportune time be? Ideally, it is that Israel acknowledges the two-state solution, that it says that here is a Palestinian state. Okay, it could do that. It could be a totally defanged Palestinian state without an ability to defend itself against Israel. And let's accept it. Um, maybe it's better that way because a state with defense capabilities could be immediately crushed by the massive Israeli military machine. And that, that would not be a danger to Israel. And there are many people in Israel who now say, let us establish a Palestinian state, one that is incapable of hurting Israel. Now, let that kind of sentiment grow within Israel. Then, at the first opportunity that one sees where Pakistan can, can at least have a fig leaf, at least have a fig leaf, then recognize Israel. Go for it. But to do it now, wrong. Because then we are saying that we have no moral standing, no right to make any moral statement because all we do is we fold up under pressure. We should not do it. Israel has no trade or diplomatic or any other relationship with Pakistan. But it will be a huge moral victory for Israel, a diplomatic victory because Pakistan has been one of the states which has cried out loudest against Israel for reasons of religious prejudice as well. And now if Israel forces Pakistan to recognize it, then Israel gains legitimacy everywhere in the world. 
Now, here is a situation where the Arab states have fallen like dominoes, one after the other, with only one state, which is not an Arab state, and that's Iran, which is standing up. But then the Israelis say, we know how to fix is Iran. Israel and Iran are at loggerheads over Palestine, but even more over the larger politics of the Middle East. And Israel fears Iran more than any other country because it has a nuclear weapons program as well, a program that within one year, if left to itself, can produce nuclear weapons. Now, the United States has backpedaled from the JCPOA, which limited Iran's uh, ability to enrich uranium, and now Iran is uh, going ahead with this fast. Now, Iran has, through its own science, through its own technology, and through its own defense industries, has managed to create a sizable defense force, one that uh, will not ever win against Israel, and Israel won't act alone, it will act together with Saudi Arabia, UAE, and the other Arab Gulf states, but it will take a big beating in that. And so even though Israel and Saudi Arabia and the Arabs will have the United States on their side, nevertheless, Iran will be able to inflict massive damage upon them. Now, Iran, they say, we will fix. And they have already tried all the economic means, all the blockades possible, all the embargoes, but that has not worked. Will they try now military action? If they do that, the world will go up into flames. It will be a terrible time, and let's hope that that never comes about.